A lot of the times when we're working with a newer supplier, the big question from them is how can I improve my product? How can I take it to that next level? Um, there's no easy answer to that because every product's different. However, I'm gonna go over some of the typical things that we see. Um, an example that we just got was in this last product review, we received a brand from Korea called Dr. X. Um, I don't wanna say the name of the product, but Dr. X did not state what the product does. It talked about all the benefits, it talked about the healing properties, it was a skincare line. It talked about what it has in it, the aloe, and it doesn't say what the product does or why somebody should pick it up. So while this might be a good strategy for GoPro, where it's a clear camera, or you know, Bang, where you know, you know it's an energy drink, when you're bringing a product, you can't assume that the person knows what the product is. So having your product's messaging and your brand's messaging clear on the box, in the shelf talker, however you're displaying it in the store is essential. Um, using your client's identity to address concerns um, will really help you overcome that issue. So if you're bringing a product that is a little bit better than the competition in the store, you want to say, you know, all natural. So it's sitting next to a non-natural product. If you want to say that it removes clean, you want to have that on the, on the label. You want to clearly display what makes your product better because you can't assume that somebody's going to read the box. Um, people typically go and they get what they're used to buying. So if you're bringing something new, if you're doing a value add, you want to clearly display that. The next, thing to look for is pricing. So at the end of the day, you're in the store, you see a price, you usually go for the cheaper one if it does the same thing, right? So knowing where your price stacks up against your competition and then displaying the value that the product brings over that other competitor is essential. So for example, when you're doing a concentrate, if you have a, a home smell product, and yours lasts 10 times longer than your competition. You can say, you know, lasts 360 days as opposed to 30. And then on the other product, it's gonna say a 30 day supply. So they're gonna understand that they're paying more, but they're gonna get a longer lasting product. Next, a way to improve your product that's not so common is understanding the shipping and logistics of the product. So how is the product getting into the store can you fit more product into a box when you're shipping into the store to lower the cost? Because a lot of the cost at the end of the day is logistics. Can you put it into a smaller package that'll ship easier, ship cleaner, and maybe stack more items on a pallet so that when you're shipping, you can reduce that cost of shipping down, saving money at the end, dropping your price point, and giving more value. Um, Lastly is merchandising in the store. You need to know how the product is going to be displayed in the store. Are you gonna be on the shelf next to your competitor? You're gonna be on an end cap? Or is the retailer open to having an aisle interrupter, a box in the middle of the aisle with a banner on it that you often see at Home Depot, Lowe's, places like that. But think about what your clients want. Improve based on their feedback, consider sampling, Consider putting products in on consignment when you're doing something new and tracking that independently to learn about your product. Because when you're learning about your product and you're learning what works, what doesn't work, you're going to be able to consistently improve. But when you stop, when you get complacent, that's when problems arise.